Hello, everyone. This is Yana Smakula for SimonSaysDM.com. Welcome back for another E.V. Brianna episode. All supplies used for this project are listed and linked in the video description below. Today, I'm sharing a card for a teacher using the Simon Says Stamp Appreciate You Stamp Set. I used to love to do pattern stamping, and it has been quite a while since I have last done any stamped pattern. So I thought I would use this stamp set to create a fun pattern for a card. I particularly like the light bulb in the stamp set. There's also a solid star that you can stamp inside the light bulb. And I figured this would make a really clever and unique pattern for a card. I'm also going to combine the light bulb with a paper clip. I think that's, you know, it's adorable. And I really like one of the sentiments in the stamp set. It reads, you shine a bright light on education. And I thought it was so fitting. So I started to work on my card by doing some stamping. Here I have my Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. I have placed it inside my Mini Misty stamping tool. I also have a grip mat from Waffle Flower inside my Misty. It is holding the paper in place and I'm going to do a ton of stamping. Now for this particular card and this particular pattern, I am combining the stamp set with the coordinating dies, meaning I will cut the images out and I will pop them up on my card. And that's because I want to have a colored background. I want to have a colored cardstock background behind the light bulbs. You can also do a simpler version of this card and skip using the coordinating dies. You can just stamp the images directly onto the background and that will save you, first of all, a lot of time and also you won't need to use the coordinating dies. And that will also help you create a flatter card or uh, if you are perhaps mass producing cards like this for the teachers at school, you know, maybe you need a bunch of cards. So that will make it easier. But I, I thought about my mom when I was making this card. So my mom, for the longest time, well, for all, during all of her life, she uh, used to be an elementary school teacher. But after her surgery, she had uh, stomach cancer surgery five years ago. She switched, um, like she needed to cut back on her hours. And she now just teaches um, Ukrainian language to elementary school kids. So her workload has lightened significantly. But she still is a teacher and she is still in school every day. So when I saw this stamp set, I really thought about my mom and also about all of the other teachers out there who really do shine a bright light on education. So here I have already done some stamping. I'm not going to show you all the stamping that you need to do for this card because obviously that is a lot of repetitive stamping. But here I have stamped a light bulb and I have added a star and that was stamped using the Simon Says Stamp Honey Ink. The light bulb was stamped using the Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. I also stamped a sticky note with a piece of tape over it. To stamp the tape, I used a combination of yellow and pink ink and you probably saw me use a finger there to kind of like uh, soften the uh, transition between the different ink colors. You know, finger is the best tool and that's the tool that I often use for uh, my card making. Okay, I'm also going to add some paper clips onto my pattern. So here I have an image of a paper clip and I'm not using a Misty, I'm just using a clear block because with a small image like this, I find it's actually easier and faster to stamp it using a clear block. So I have treated my paper with an anti-static powder tool. I then stamp the paper clips using clear embossing ink and I'm going to emboss them using the Simon Says Stamp Antique Gold Embossing Powder well, because I want to have gold paper clips on my pattern. Now the word teacher, I didn't mention this before, this was stamped using Versafine Onyx Black ink, which is a pigment ink. And this is the type of ink that takes a little bit longer to dry. So I used that particular ink because I wanted to heat set that sentiment and I used clear embossing powder over that sentiment to heat set it just to add some shine to it. So now I'm using my heat tool and I'm melting the powder on both the paper clips and the word teacher. Obviously, you will need a lot more light bulbs, a lot more paper clips for this pattern. I did a lot of my stamping off camera as I was kind of 
preparing for this card as I was planning my card. So here on video, I'm just showing you the basic stamping. Okay, next, I used the coordinating dies and I cut my images out. For the light bulb, I decided that I needed to add some shading. And so here I'm using my Copic markers, the C5, C3, and C1. So the cool gray markers to add shading to that metal part of the light bulb. And here you can see the two light bulbs side by side, colored and non-colored. So you can decide whether you want to color yours or just leave it as is. Because again, if you're mass producing, maybe you don't have the time to do all the coloring because remember, we do have a ton of light bulbs on our card. Okay, next I'm going to create a background for my pattern. And like I mentioned, I wanted to use colored cardstock, but not just colored cardstock. I wanted to add some additional color because I really love to have a lot of bold and vibrant color on my card. So here I'm starting with a panel of Simon Says DM cotton candy cardstock. This is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm going to use inks to add color. So first I have the Simon Says DM positively saturated guava ink. It is a nice soft pink. It's just, I would say a shade darker than my cardstock. And I'm using this to apply ink about to about two thirds of the panel. Now, if you don't have colored cardstock, you definitely can use white cardstock and do your ink blending on white. I prefer to use colored cardstock because this way I have to add far less ink and also because I don't have to work as hard. You know, I already have the color, I'm just adding more color on top. Next, I'm using color rose, and this is a much darker pink, and I'm applying that over the lighter pink, and I'm now going back to that lighter pink and blending the two colors together. I also have yellow here. This is the citrine color, also the Simon Says DM positively saturated ink, and I'm adding this color from the other side of the panel, and I'm blending that into the pink. So I, have, I now have yellow, orange and very hot pink on this panel. And this is exactly how I envisioned it. I wanted to have a gradient on my background. I wanted to have a lot of bold and vivid color. Love it. When I flip the panel to the back, you can see the original color of cardstock. Okay, now I wanted to talk a little bit about my idea for this card and how I plan my uh, patterns. So I usually use a scrap piece of paper. This is just printer paper. And I just stamp the images onto scrap paper using black ink, you know, just to plan the image placement out. So here you can see I've stamped a bunch of light bulbs. I added the yellow stars and I added the paper clips and also the smaller stars in between the paper clips just to fill the background in. I'm not going to add those smaller stars because there will be no room on my panel, on my pattern, on my background, but I did plan to do that originally. So if you are stamping this without using the coordinating dies, that's definitely something that you can do. If you feel you have gaps in your background, you can absolutely add additional stamped images. You can also overlap the paper clips to have two paper clips, you know, or a grouping of three paper clips together. So let's go ahead and start building our pattern. I am using my test piece as a guide to help me figure out the image placement. I don't need to reinvent the image placement here. I'm just following that. Not exactly because it's kind of hard to follow that exactly, but it's just a general guide to tell me where each light bulb goes. I already added foam adhesive to the back of my light bulbs and to the back of my paper clips and even to the back of my sticky note sentiment piece. So once I have everything placed, I'm going to remove the backing from my foam adhesive squares uh, and just adhere these in place. I do fuss around a little bit with the image placement to make sure that everything fits, but once I'm happy, I go ahead and I stick pieces down. Obviously, I have images going outside the edge of my panel, and that's the intention. I want this pattern to look as if it was clipped from a larger piece. Sometimes I do patterns that are contained on a background. This is not the case. I intentionally want images to go outside the edges of the background, and then I just use scissors and I trim the axis. 
And I just uh, make sure that I have nothing sticking out and nothing goes outside the edge of the panel. I do have a gap at the bottom there and I will come back to that gap and I will add another partial light bulb there. I also will come back and add some of the trimmed uh, paper clips onto some gaps that I have on my background just to fill it in. And here we have our pattern finished. I love the way this turned out. I added the sticky note on top. Again, I used foam adhesive squares for that. And then I added the die cut teacher on top of that. So I actually have three layers of foam adhesive squares here, which is kind of how I like my cards. But again, if you're not into super thick and dimensional projects or cards, you can definitely dial down, dial back on the foam adhesive or use the thin foam adhesive squares or do a one layer card similar to what I have on my test pattern. So that finishes this video. I hope you enjoyed this look back at pattern stamping and I hope you will join me again. Maybe I'll do another pattern stamping video soon. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me do more of these kinds of videos. Thanks again for joining me. Love you guys and I'll see you next time.